In seven real life days, a helicopter will land somewhere in this zombie infested city and we have to get on it if we mean to survive. And when it's on its way in, the server will switch to hardcore mode. But for the next seven days, myself, Ford, Shadow Mech, Sneeve, Kim, Robert, and It's Ryan are all going to be trying to survive against zombies that can break blocks, run faster than we can, and can see us for miles. And they're not even the most dangerous thing here. The other players are probably going to kill you because if they do, they steal one of your hearts. You are not prepared for the surprises, the secrets, and the drama that is about to unfold. And I'm probably going to do something like this with subscribers soon. So make sure you're subscribed so you have a chance to be in that video. But now let's roll back the clock seven days and get started. We have 168 hours until extraction. My spawn for this event was at the airport in a crashed plane at the end of one of the runways. The whole story we were going with is that I was escaping on my private jet when kaboom. A lot of the chests and overhead compartments here had leather armor, so I was able to get myself pretty well geared, at least with basic starter things. It's weird, almost nobody makes leather, but in the zombie apocalypse, you take what you can get. In the chests out behind the wreckage, I found a few more things like cobwebs, which would be useful for combat, a redstone torch or two, which might help me get into areas. I grabbed a quick zombie head if I wanted to disguise or destroy somebody with it at some point in time and looted the fire engine that was right here getting a few buckets of water which would lead to an infinite water source more cobwebs for combat but two fire resistance potions which honestly feels like a big win right oh away my God. <laughs> I'm stacked <laughs> From there, my first thought was a sustainable food source. I had found some bread in the plane, but I'm gonna need to grow more. So I was breaking grass while trying to get seeds, while running from runway to runway, finding even larger abandoned planes just sitting here on the tarmac. I made my way up the air traffic control tower, thinking that an elevated position further away from any potential zombie spawners would help protect me in the night and help me be a little bit less obvious as far as a base that I would choose to take up residence in instead of building something completely of my own. Because it's worth noting, well, this is the apocalypse, this is the end of the world. Any of these players, if they kill me, they get one of my hearts. So once you start losing in fights, it's a snowball setting you off worse and worse and worse. And I'm gonna to be totally honest, this led to a really tense situation whenever you saw another player. Back to the first day though, I dropped down into the staging area around the ATC tower, which was the only place that I had seen wood, like at all. Grabbing just enough planks to be able to create a pickaxe, which would allow me to go out and mine a lot of the tarmac and roads, getting cobblestone from the smooth stone that was around. I went back up to the top of the tower while the zombies were running around in the very first night on the server and just spent a little bit of time organizing my inventory making sure that I had a clear plan and strategy for what I wanted to do. Once the sun rose I went down and grabbed a little bit more wood running across the tarmac fighting a few zombies realizing that whew, they are a little bit tougher to kill than normal vanilla zombies. Then again, that one was wearing armor. As I was digging into a plane though, Sean announced to the world that he had found beer. beer. Maybe there was something to survive for after all in this apocalyptic wasteland. I continued while the sun was up looting everything, finding a baggage cart with a bunch more leather armor, a few name tags which would come in handy, and more of those redstone torches and cobwebs, which are probably junk items for most other people, but I know how important they can be in combat. I climbed up the vines looking into the terminal, seeing, you know, what's clearly a Starbucks based on the prices, and looking to see all these different shops that I knew I was going to loot, but I feel like I needed a little bit more gear before I would venture inside. From there, I went back up to the ATC tower, blocking off the stairs at the bottom to make sure no zombies could follow me up, and using my buckets of water to clear out the carpets just to make sure that no spawners were hidden underneath that I could get jump scared by a zombie popping up on my face. Kim was apparently having a rough go of it with a bunch of super vast zombies spawning all around him. So make sure to go check out his video after you're done with mine to see what his day one looked like. I had to log off for a little bit. When I popped back on, it was nighttime and oh boy, were there zombies basically everywhere. 
I fought off a few at the bottom of the tower, but my main thought here was to evade. They're extremely slow, and I can move so much faster, and I don't have the tools and durability to really fight them off. I was grabbing logs from a few of the trees that existed in between all of the different runways and near one of the edges of the airport before venturing into a bunker, seeing a ton of different supplies and resources, enough crafting tables that the members of my community SMP might actually be satisfied with this. Probably not, let's be honest. But there were spawners basically everywhere, and while I'm trying to break them to get my experience up so I would have have the ability to do higher level enchants once I would get to that level, the sheer number of mobs was absolutely terrifying. What even am I supposed to do with this? What even is this? Oh my god! I found what can only be described as a stealth bomber, just parked randomly here in the corner of the airport flicking a few of the different levers i heard everything happening but it didn't really take me anywhere we're playing this map on an updated version from what it's most recently been used on so some of the command blocks and things that you've seen on it might be broken that's our fault not theirs this place is absolutely amazing i dug into the back of another one of the hangars since all the zombies were collected at the front just trying to loot any additional chests i climbed up onto the plane to get a bird's eye view and look at those god rays right there that's amazing but i saw these containers for lack of a better word stuck on the side went over and my disappointment is immeasurable almost nothing happened okay i have a plan we're gonna run in and grab that potentially explosive fuel really quickly yes run time to run that is a ton of spawners oh my god it might seem silly that i'm getting excited over things like flint and charcoal but i don't know how much i'd be able to get from mining in this place so i figured looting chests is my primary road to decent loot Plus, we're going to see new things and potential map-specific items all throughout this playthrough. I didn't know it yet, but some of the loot here is bonkers. I worked my way into the aquatic restaurant at the end of the airport terminal, finding my way into a kitchen which was absolutely stacked with food. The problem is the door was openable by zombies, and we started having a bit of an issue with a choke point being formed. As I was grabbing everything, like the anvils, smokers, blast furnaces, all of stuff which is gonna cost a lot of resources that I genuinely won't have and it'll be super useful for me later down in the line. I was just trapped in here. There's one way in, one way out, and the zombies were kind of opening the door, which is exactly the situation I was telling you about earlier that you wanted to avoid. Seriously, bit of a problem. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Okay, axe. I was able to finally work my way through the horde, break the plates on the outside of the door so they wouldn't be able to work their way in, and take a sigh of relief. That was almost really, really, really bad. And I had to log out there, ending my first day in the apocalypse and preparing for whatever dangers were ahead. Day two, and the first mutation of the mustard virus has occurred. Now zombies are a little bit faster, and it's gonna be a little bit harder to outrun them. Realizing that I couldn't go out the main door of the freezer anymore, since there was just infinite zombies in that direction, I broke my way through the glass and swam through the aquarium, breaking out into an overall atrium area at one end of the airport terminal. There's a ton of trees and other things that I could use for basic supplies in this space, but I don't know if I'd actually be able to hold and defend it. I worked my way into several of the different shops, trying to see if there were other just either custom or just basic items here that I could use to stay up on food and potentially, you know, get iron. I had very, very limited iron accessible to me. The arcade really didn't warn anything, nor did either of the shops. There was a bunch of empty glass bottles at the airport bar in the middle of the space, which would be useful for potion crafting later. But here's where things started to get interesting. There was a coffee, which would give me strength and speed, but I didn't know that. None of these potions were labeled. You just kind of had to figure it out as you went. But a lot of steaks and other high saturation foods were in here, as well as a few swords and other weapons. But when I made my way into the Wick Monolds, if you watch RT game, you know what I'm talking about. There was something kind of disturbing waiting for me in the freezer. I hate my job. My boss, EMZ, is the worst. 
I've been working here for about a year and I have no idea why I didn't get back at her. Last week, EMZ wrote me up because she would, my name tag was crooked. That's not fair. My other coworkers love me unlike her. This is the last straw. She knocked a large metal tray over and spilled a drink all over me. She blamed me. It was her fault. She wrote me up for having pop on my uniform. Her fault. I get it. In shit. Where is that tray? Oh no. <laughs> Don't be a jerk to your coworkers, friends. It never ends well. Okay, yeah, this map is, this map is a lot. It's a little heavy. Uh, I thoroughly suggest playing it, but I had other things to worry about. The zombies that we had on here and the other people who I was sharing the city with. I made my way over to the car park, looting my way through car trunks, trying to find food, supplies, weapons, but also mining out any stone or cobblestone that I saw to just get a good reserve that I could use for furnaces, extra tools, and additional crafting recipes. The zombies being a little bit faster meant that they were actually catching up to me as I was mining blocks, and I had to be a little bit more active on the move. I climbed up the vines, making my way up to the roof, which was a relatively safe area with not many zombies up here, making my way back into a second level of the parking garage and finding a camp that had been secured with a bunch of cars upended on the wall this this is a potential gold mine smart idea to put the cars in their sides as barricades a few zombies we did get got killed instantly because they banged on the wall i can't wait to be a part of the guard duty shoot any of those undead <laughs> with my trusty crossbow this is like an actual livable space Potentially. I started looting through all of the different chests that were around here, finding dogs, a bunch of different supplies, and some food that I could use to, for farming and actually start growing things. There's also expedition logs, some hints as far as some other locations that I should go visit, and then a book that, again, dives into the story of this place. Killed us all. Bob killed us all. I swear after that night he murdered us like he did the farmer. None of us know how to plant crops. But the main problem I have is that some of these zombies, a random amount of them, are spawned with a ton more health than any others. And it gives you absolutely zero indication of which ones they are. So you can find yourself trapped in a corner with a zombie that you just can't kill. And look at how long this clip is to kill this just this one zombie. But my thought process is, here's a place that I could potentially stay, make safe, and make a base of my own. And that's what I did. Finding a last little bit of seeds and bread and other supplies, I made as many torches as I could and ran around the area, throwing down torches to hopefully prevent zombie spawns and killing any zombies that happened to be within the space. Now, this was a pretty big ask because it's a pretty big overall area to attempt to secure and I kept finding additional spots where zombies would just walk up on me which doesn't make for a great base but it's all I had to work with right now. I started putting down roots breaking down any logs that I saw anywhere inside the entire facility crafting those down into planks which I could use for chests sticks crafting table and converting some of them back into charcoal and as I was working my way over in the airport establishing a small little colony or community that I could keep safe over in the city, it turns out people had found each other and very quickly negotiations went south. As I'm just minding my business, Kim just killed Robert in cold blood, stealing a heart of his health and putting himself immediately on everybody's hit list. That set the tone pretty quickly for this entire scenario. When you see somebody, you have no idea whether they're gonna talk to you or shoot first and ask questions later. And in reading the lore books of this place, I can kind of understand why. I don't know who Bob is. But we hate Bob. Bob is the worst. But my priority here is to establish a beachhead, get myself someplace that I can safely start setting up infrastructure, food, enchanting, weapons production, potentially some potion brewing if I can find the ingredients so I can set myself up for success. Plus, I'm gonna trap the heck out of this place. So if anybody walks in here who isn't me, they're gonna get killed. I found a ton of charcoal, a ton of buckets, a ton of cobwebs, and I was just collecting and consolidating all the loot down to a central area. And in what is potentially the silliest find, but one that I was genuinely quite pleased in, I found a sponge hidden behind a wall. You know what? 
you got to take the little victories. But on top of the cheese, the biggest finds was some gunpowder and an iron axe, which is a huge weapon upgrade from what I'm looking at right now, and a tool upgrade as well. Just iron anything is invaluable. Once all the torching was complete and I felt a little bit safe with my surroundings, my main thought was food. Putting down a bunch of dirt, tilling it, and then planting my potatoes. While everybody in all chat was talking about getting revenge on Kim, and that is something we'll address a little bit later. My first thought was getting a bed down and setting my spawn. If I die, I want to be reborn here and not out on the tarmac. But when I logged back in, my fears over this overall area being something that I could secure, they were kind of realized. But one or two zombies in the space quickly turned into an overwhelming horde, forcing me onto the wall, literally bopping them as they started climbing up over the ladder. And this got loud. It also served as an impromptu experience farm, but I don't have mending on my tools, nor do I really have good tools or weapons, meaning that I was blowing through all of my resources, getting myself up to level 30, and I don't even know if I'm going to survive that long to be able to use that in an enchanting table. I was put on the wall for the better part of 15 or 20 minutes. One thing I did find out while this was happening, though, is that zombies dropped more and different things. They dropped ender pearls, gunpowder, glowstone, redstone, all of that would be extremely important for just mobility, movement, but also being able to enchant and brew potions. I banked up a lot of the supplies, killed any few stragglers that I found, repaired and replaced my stone sword, keeping the iron one in case I happen to find something a little bit harder to kill, you know, like a person, and collected all of the iron nuggets I had found into my first iron ingot on day two of this server, using it to make a crossbow, which I had the thought of loading with the road flares that I had found in one of the trunks, using it for an explosive attack. The problem I had though is just as it turned to night, the zombies overwhelmed the overall camp again. Maybe that's why it was actually abandoned, forcing me up on the roof of my tent so they wouldn't be able to bite at me, hitting and opening my chests from standing on top of a bunch of wool blocks. At this point, I'm reduced to eating just a few apples, organizing what little inventory I have, including a few treasure keys that I had found, and I'm just trying to plant crops while not being overrun. But despite trying to plant crops and secure this area, it was starting to feel like this wasn't the best place to be. This wasn't a good long-term base, so it was time to venture out. I went back into the airport terminal, checking all of the trunks of cars again, because I had already found some pretty good supplies in there, making my way all the way up to the front terminal, and again, the slowness of the zombies and the fact that there were far fewer of them here in this brighter space than in the parking garage meant that I could move around a little bit more securely. I found some fresh milk sitting in the trunk, and uh, wh wh why did I drink this? Oh my god, this is the worst. Once I had gotten over the sickness, and I would remember those, they would come in handy later, I went over to a airport history museum or something along those lines, finding a little bit of upgraded armor, but there was a screwdriver in one of the chests which would allow me to unlock a few different locked containers that existed on this map, and that would definitely come in handy. But I made my way out of there, ran my way back through the parking garage that I had tried to establish a beachhead at, and it was completely overrun. Just dozens on dozens of zombies, and that space was far too large to try to secure. So I gave up. I abandoned it, thinking that it was probably time to venture out from the airport anyway, heading into the city proper to get towards new and more varied loot and potentially start encountering the other players, working on garnering some ally ships or alliances, or seeing who was a threat and potentially taking them out. I made my way through a very crowded tunnel packed with cars, everyone trying to escape the city, checking every trunk I could because you never know what you might find. And then the blood moon decided to rise and things were not looking great. I just ran over to a billboard that I saw on the side of the mountain, climbed up it and just camped out waiting for this to pass. How convenient that Sneeve needed to leave right when it's a blood moon. How perfect. How perfect. Yep. And blood moon. Definitely problematic. We're just going to camp out up here and stay safe until the morning. As much as I want to do the blood moon, I'm going to log off because it's 2 a.m. IRL and it's time for bed. Yep, no more playing spooky Minecraft at 2 a.m. And now you know why that nausea effect hit me even harder. I'd been at my computer for like 14 hours by then. So, whew, that was rough. I had to sleep that one off.
Day three, the next mutation of the mustard virus has occurred. Now, 10% of the zombies can start breaking blocks, which means even if you build a base, it's not fully safe anymore. When I logged in, the server was actually in the middle of the night, which was kind of scary. I was trapped up on that billboard still with no real way down. I jumped off and ran in towards the plane, blocking off all of the entrance points to a small compartment of it, and just hoping that none of the zombies that came close were the ones that could break blocks. I started looting everything I could find, finding a pilot's dagger, which actually increased my speed whenever I held it in my hand, which would be huge. Now I could outrun zombies again, and I didn't have to worry about their speed increases. Down inside the cargo hold was a whole ton of leather armor and a few different tipped arrows. Now, I wouldn't use these on other players, but being able to give myself strength for a few seconds, if I could time it right, that could be a serious advantage. The zombies though were taking quite a few extra hits to kill, so things are starting to get a little concerning there. But as the sun started to rise, I made my way out the plane and into the city proper, making my way immediately to a warehouse with a bunch of different bandit banners around it and what looked like an initial little survivor camp established inside. But I couldn't clear that yet, so I went up onto the roof, seeing a whole bunch of wool, which I was able to break down to create a bed, even though that would be irrelevant in about 90 seconds. And I went across a quick little bridge that had been established here, going into a hotel up on the fourth or fifth floor, something like that. Now this, this was a pretty defensible base location. And while I was failing to record the live voiceover basically saying that, this is where I decided to establish a new beachhead and where I wanted to live. I figured with multiple different rooms and high up into the buildings, I would be pretty safe from the zombies and be in a defensible position if any of the other survivors happened to notice where I was. Just needed to try to make sure that wherever I lived looked like it was part of the ruined map in the first place. And I know this might not be smart, but you technically can't loot somebody's base when they're not online in this scenario. So I put a sign on the door. It does announce me, but if somebody's gotten this far, they probably know it's somebody's base already. The next morning, as I was continuing to loop my way through the adjacent tower to my new home, all of a sudden one of the monitors sparked to life and I started hearing something. This is a radio transmission. Hey, how's it going? It's, uh, I'm in a bunker right now, not doing too... Here's the problem. There's a man living in the city and he needs to die. His name is Kim, and anyone who can kill this man will be rewarded handsomely. I've got a chest hidden with some good stuff, and when I tell you this is good stuff, you got to believe me, it's some good stuff. If you kill this man, I'll give you the location of the chest, and it's yours, all right? I want this guy dead. you got one day. Well, that is interesting. I mean, I'm certainly not against killing Kim, and if I could get a bunch of stuff by killing Kim... Well, this seems like a a win-win, actually. <laughs> if Sean is willing to offer a whole bunch of resources to somebody else, odds are he has more or better stuff for himself, and I need to close the gap when it comes to gear. Doing a little bit of light reading while I continued my way through the hotel and securing all of the different floors, yeah, everything kind of went very bad very quickly in the city once the mustard virus was released. But as I was sleeping, everybody was talking in all chat about how we all wanted to kill Kim. I think the feeling was pretty unanimous at that point. The next day, I used my bucket of water to be able to infiltrate the bandit camp from the roof, circumventing a lot of the different zombie fighting that you'd have to do on the lower layers and just working from rooftop to rooftop inside of this building with its own rooftop. There was a ton of cobwebs, glass, bottles, bricks, and other resources that I could use. A lot of redstone, which would come in handy, definitely. But the biggest find overall was a ton of gold blocks being used in multiple different decorative places throughout the bandit camp. Golden apples would be great to be able to keep health up and as an excellent recovery tool mid-combat. The only problem? They don't break with a stone pickaxe, and I had found very little iron and no iron pickaxes, so I couldn't harvest it just yet. Okay, game plan. Back to the airport, grab everything I can and bring it back here because being up this high off the ground means zombies aren't finding me and I can move with a little bit more freedom and in doing so I can escape a lot of the problems that I was having at the airport just being surrounded. With everything committed I'm heading back to my original base to grab all the resources that I had left behind to venture them out and bring them over to the hotel location. And while I was on the way I did some looting and had some awesome finds. Is this a Wick Monolds? 
Oh my god, I found a diamond. Well, diamonds are good and all. In all honesty, the biggest find I had was this horse, which was just kind of sitting out somewhere with gold armor on, chilling in the middle of the road. I immediately jumped on and used them to be able to save a ton of energy on my own part, not having to worry about food, and also being able to outrun most of the zombies. This horse actually moved pretty fast. So now I wasn't alone in this world anymore, but don't worry, that was about to get even more populated with allies, because as soon as I got home, I had a few things in my pocket. Bone, please. Oh my god, yes, we have a dog! <laughs> As I was using my new wolf friend to defend me, however, and feeling really riding high that I had just had a ton of things go my way, Ryan was killed by a zombie, and that basically set the tone for this day. You served me well, house, but it's time to go. This was huge, super successful. Honestly, the best way this possibly could have gone. The main thing I wanted to do at this point was grab more dirt so I could use it to establish different crops and farmland to get a renewable food supply. That was something I couldn't do up in the hotel, so I grabbed the resources here. Finding out that the other side of the tunnel was super empty, so I was able to just run right through it. However, it sounded like Ryan saw me or heard me when I was going through the tunnel. That was something I was gonna have to note for later because at this point in the day, I didn't have the time to stop and have a conversation. The fact that he wanted Wanted to chat though was definitely something that I filed away. A potential ally or friend would be wonderful. Having to go this completely alone in the apocalypse just opens up your back for a potential sneak attack. But I rode the horse all the way back into town, right around the hotel area, stashing them inside a small little fenced location, climbing up the side of the building and taking a deep breath. Absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. Diamonds, iron, anvils, smithing tables, a horse. That is everything we could have asked for and more. Now all we need to do is make this floor of the hotel actually sustainable for life. So that's what I focused on now, taking one of the other rooms, removing all of the carpet and planting down all of the dirt, using a couple different water source blocks to hydrate all of the farmland, planting all of the potatoes that I could then cook on campfires to save on fuel. Once all of the sweet berries were down and I was getting the intermediary food from there while I was waiting for the potatoes to grow, I did something which I thought would be big brain. In case anybody made it to my base and did happen to loot it when I was online, I didn't want them to get my best stuff. So I threw it in a barrel underneath the wall. And if you're wondering where that elytra in the corner came from, I had actually found it on top of the factory earlier in that day. But we decided as a group to not allow elytras to be used as part of this competition. I wanted to hold on to it just in case people change their minds if they happen to find one as well. But we all know how that played out for me back in the purge. So call me cautious, but I didn't want to repeat the same mistake again. But I also didn't want to completely give up on the opportunity of diving down and killing someone from the sky. I used water to descend the side of the building, finding my horse wandering around a little bit, grabbing them and heading over to the amusement park area that was relatively close to my base. There was blood and skulls everywhere, and I'm pretty sure that predated the Apocalypse. I've been to Six Flags, I know how that goes. But inside all of the different vending machines was mob heads and different foods, crops that I could grow, which would be extremely important. Cakes and corn dogs, weird combination. The arcade machines really didn't do much, but there was potatoes and hose in one of them that I was able to pop out of the item frames. But I thought, I had a few moments, it's the end of the world, who's gonna stop me? I jump on the roller coaster and have just a little bit of fun and enjoy. Weeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Don't do that. What? <laughs> what was that? Okay, so I think this is something that you all need to know. This map has a ton of amazing and really unique loot on it. And one of the most scuffed items of the entire balance of the world are grenades. These are a one hit kill lingering splash potion that you can find in several different high priority areas around the map. And I did not know that that was a thing when Kim used it to kill me. Now I was down a heart, half of my gear was gone. Kim had evaded my initial ire and knew that I'd be coming to kill him if I happened to see him again. Plus he had me massively outclassed if he had more of those grenades. There is almost nothing I can do to attempt to combat that. So this was a major setback. I collected what little loot I could find from the fight zone and did a little bit of raiding around that harvested nothing consequential. Went back up towards my base to harvest all of my crops, reset and recollect my mind. And oh boy, did I wanna kill Kim. But Ryan was whispering to me and he could be a potential ally in the future. So I jumped on the horse and headed over towards where I had heard him last to see if we could have a conversation. I can hear you now. So I'm going to be keeping my distance because grenades are busted and I didn't know about them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to just kind of drop them off the side? Yeah, I will tell you what. You drop the arrows, I'll drop the sweet berries over here and then we can trade. Oh, heck. There's the 20 arrows here. I'll kind of get out of your way. There's so. your, there's the sweet berries right where you just dropped them. If you come down the vines, it'll be safe for you to get what you need. So hopefully that's easy. A lot of zombies. Are you going to be okay? Do you have any grenades on you? Uh, yeah, I've got two on me currently. Cause I was gonna use them to kill Kim, but yeah, I already got the bounty on Kim, so. No, I get it. Um, yeah. I was gonna offer you uh, being able to run, but never mind. You're good. I'm gonna wait until you're inside, so I don't get hit with those grenades. That'd be great. Yeah. Pleasure doing business with you. We will murder Kim later just for fun. Okay. I think I heard you. Okay, bye, I gotta run. So on that little graph that you'd like to put up on screen, please editor, Kim is definitely over in the enemy column. Ryan is in the potential ally and everyone else is under a whole big set of question marks because this city has brought out the worst in all of us. I had a little bit of playful banter with everybody, poking at Kim, definitely having a lot of fun. Just a reminder, we're all friends. We're all just messing with each other as friends, but oh boy, do I want to kill this man right now. But as we were all talking and then I was doing some fishing in a hotel room on the fifth floor of a building and definitely catching fish and don't think about it too hard, it'll hurt your brain rob was able to kill kim and recovered a lot of my stuff and he and sean were trying to offer to sell it back to me or anything else along those lines and that that just didn't feel great but rob seemed pretty genuine and offered to meet me over at the airport to deliver the items back to me okay this is almost certainly a betrayal so i'm leaving everything here <laughs> I figured it was worth a shot and maybe this situation would be a little bit different and we could have a nice clean exchange of items, information, and potentially friendship. Riding on my horse back towards the airport, I was nervous the whole way. I was looting a few different chests, seeing if I could find anything good, knowing that I'd likely stash some of it aside so I wasn't bringing it and potentially delivering it right to Rob. As I made my way back to the airport and announced that I was there, I dropped off a bunch of stuff into a barrel and did a little bit of looting of this hotel that actually existed at the airport, finding a few more fireworks that I could load into my crossbow and grabbing a little bit more food and supplies from several of the different storage spaces. From there, I ducked back in towards my original base, grabbing the stone cutter to be able to save on resources and a few other small things that I had left behind because my inventory was full. From there, I cooked a little bit of food and as I was working on clearing out some spawners so I wouldn't be attacked, Rob walked up. Robert? Well, hello. You brought a lot, you brought a lot of zombies with you. Not for once. <laughs> I have had a very hard time securing this space. The good news is they're still very slow and very dumb. Yeah, that's good. I, I brought your dagger. Um, if you could just put it in that I don't barrel. Anything. I'm gonna throw I, it down I, over here. You'll have my thanks. I really appreciate it. Uh, no, my inventory I'll, is full. I'll pick it up if you can. No, I got it. I got it. Thank you. Okay. It's so nice to be able to kite all because oh they're God, everywhere. So <laughs> there are. 
Yeah, this has been very hard to secure a base in amongst all of this. I've barely well, you left died the yet, airport. Right? Only to Kim. Oh, he killed you too? He ran over to me, tried to kill me, I got into a fight with him, and then he grenaded me. Yeah, he had grenades. So that's the only reason. Like, I was just mm -hmm. traveling around and I found Kim and I was trying to say hi to him. And he didn't say anything back to me. He just kept he kept being quiet and trying to hide from me. And I was like, Kim, I know you're here. Yeah. And then he goes, I don't trust anybody. And I was just down and he went into a tower and I was like, Kim, come on, what are you doing? And then he just throws a grenade on me and kills me. At him. least he said something to you. He he said literally nothing to me. He just he just he killed said, me. I trust no one and then throws it down and he just me. he where are you finding all of that loot? Oh, I went mining for diamonds, but I found a lot oh. of um Oh, that's smart. I found a lot of books, enchanted books. Yeah, I was Did gonna you... say, you have a totem too? I have, I have a couple. Did you loot the crashed airplane? Several, yes. That's um, where I found the paratroopers dagger. Oh, okay, like the big one on the highway. Yep, that's the furthest out I've been. All right, well yeah, good good doing business with you. Thank you, I appreciate yes, it. Course, I owe you one, this is very, very kind. You got it. Mm hmm that honestly went really well. Like, really, really, really well. Honestly, I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm a little surprised how genuinely frictionless that all was and that I walked out of there with my paratrooper dagger in hand and I had everything I wanted. That was a net win for me. I ran back towards the house, dropping off everything, just trying to make sure that I hadn't been followed and storing everything away in that little extra chest just in case I had been and didn't notice. As I rolled over to the next day though, Rob wanted me to return back and that was a little strange, but I thought, you know what? The last conversation had gone really well, so maybe I could go ahead and go for two for two. <laughs> that works. Hi, what's up? So the thing is, I wanted to, um, like, that was also kind of a test. I wanted to see if you'd be friendly, which yeah. I guess it se seems like you are. No hard feelings from a past scenario. Whatever, you know, that, that is what it is. We'll bugaboo. What's, what's a bugaboo? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I'll never know what a bugaboo <laughs> is either. Um, so I wanted to to know if you wanted to kind of work together and find Kim. You know, see if you had any information. I'm on in. Him. You're in. You want to work dies. together? Kim dies at my at my hand. Here's what's gonna happen, Laguna. You're gonna drop everything right now. Bye. I knew it. I knew it. Bullshit. We have you right now. I can kill you right now. I'm not gonna do it. No, stop, stop. We're not, we're not attacking. Look at no. I promise you. We're not uh, attacking. Uh, 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 uh. Back like up. This. Stop following me. I don't know stop following me. Do. You don't blind people that you just want to talk to. Well, I do. I need to be. I need you in a certain state. Five minutes of. Where the <laughs> hell did you even get this? We want to make an entrance. I didn't know Sean oh, was gonna. Oh, you've made an entrance. I, I didn't Sean. know Sean was gonna blind you. <laughs> Look behind you. Behind you. Kind of kill this would be really great if you know I wasn't blind. I guess I guess it's good because now we actually can talk and we have you here. Um, got you, got you in corner. Okay, listen. You work for us now. <laughs> You're gonna find Kim's base. Kim's already killed me with those stupid grenades once. I don't want you to. I don't want you to fight him. We will fight him. We just want you to find him. I can't risk getting hit by those grenades. How many hearts yet, John? Doesn't matter. We're being friends, you should share information. I have 11. You have 11 hearts? I had 12, yes. You're in a better spot than I am. I know. How much health do you have? Enough. <laughs> okay, I want to show you something. No, no! <laughs> so I think, I think, uh, what we're trying to say is, um... You find Kim's base, or next time we see you, we kill you. Okay, so... Once you he... find it, I want you to make a radio broadcast saying the eagle has spotted the dog. If I'm gonna track him down, I need something that he took from me. What? I need some pearls. So if I find him, I can like Here, it. Here's, here's payment up front, one pearl. That that repays the one I just used to escape you. Yep, there you go. Oh, I can finally see again, oh. And if you, you can pull us off, you'll be rewarded. I just need to find him. I don't need to kill him. You don't need to find him. You just need to find him. <laughs> you need to find him. <laughs> you need to find him. <laughs> I just need to find him. I don't need to kill him. You need a positive idea on where his base is. 
I'll send a radio transmission, or if I tell you that there's a dead drop at site A, it's in this barrel. All right. Okay. Okay. So that was kind of unexpected, getting blinded and cornered in a room with two people who were in full diamond gear. I had no idea where they had even found all that stuff or how much grinding they had been doing to find that kind of resources when I was still barely in iron for having looted almost everything I could find. You're gonna have to go watch their videos to see how they got to that point or whether or not I should have trusted them at this point. But I was no longer a man working on my own accord. I had a boss now and a mission. That mission just happened to align with my own interests and what I already wanted to do. Kim had to die. Except now I had a much more concrete reward waiting for me if I happened to accomplish it. And I didn't have to do the killing myself. I just needed to find his base. So come day four, I was on the hunt. It's day four in the zombie apocalypse and zombies can now break more blocks and their health has been doubled, meaning they're going to be much harder to kill and much harder to evade. As soon as I logged on to the server this day, Kim logged off, which made me think that maybe he knew I was coming for him. That timing was just way too suspicious. The heck? All right. What well, keeps connecting and disconnecting? What well, keeps connecting and disconnecting? I am undergeared. Our main priority right now is to get some diamonds. <sighs> but I do have the task that I've been given by Sean. Being torn between my own survival and serving the people who were blackmailing me with death, I kind of split the middle. I definitely need to get myself upgraded. I'm severely undergeared compared to all of the other players because they've all been mining for diamonds or have been in more loot rich areas of the city. The airport, as it turns out, was not the best place to start. As I was running around and just destroying a few different zombie spawners, trying to secure the general area that I'm in, I got a message from Ryan saying that he wanted to catch up with me since we had missed each other talking the previous day. So I jumped on my horse and headed out towards the airport. He said he was around this overpass area. So as I was running around and just trying to get his attention, I finally saw him pop out on the ridge. We had an interesting conversation. Hi, can I just come up? <laughs> yeah, come on up. Okay. I come uh -huh. to you a broken man. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I need to get diamonds. I've looted this entire city and I found one. Yeah, so uh here, come on in. Um okay. Kinda, you know, what are you offering for uh for these 10 diamonds? And of course, you know, I can get you any more that you would need for a full set of diamond armor. If you can get I me mean. a full set of diamond armor, zombies are and a great. diamond axe. So that's what 20 so 27. Mm -hmm. How many golden apples is that worth to you? How many do you have to offer first? I'm saving up iron. I'm assuming if you have diamonds, if you can oh, turn- Oh yeah, I've got- yeah. yeah. I've got three, four stacks of iron in my back pocket right now, in my inventory. Can I just have like, one? <laughs> There's a free stack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I been looting the city when you all just go underground? <laughs> I know of a building that has what looks like three separate four by two by 10 cubes of gold. That's a few. That's a few. And I've been farming apples. So. Okay, okay. Enough for armor, a sword, and an ax. I can give you, let's say 16 regular golden apples. It won't improve your health, but that's a really good survivability yeah. tool. Especially for Stretching. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, getting a couple hearts, getting some free regen really quickly. Make it 25 golden apples and we've got a deal. I'm limited on apples. That's the thing. I don't know if I'll get enough. Yeah, yeah. If you... I, can, I can probably okay, do the gold, that. The gold, I can do that. So can... 25 blocks of gold. 25 blocks of gold for full diamond armor and a diamond axe. And a sword? I could get you a sword. Thank you. Because I want to be able Here. to set Kim on fire. <laughs> Here, I'll give you a sword as a down payment, just real quick. Oh. You know, just to show you that I'm serious. Hey, yep. Feel free to enchant it if you want. I'm not level 30. <laughs> or else I, I can enchant it if you want. I got 33. Okay. Right. 
Oh, that rerolled to smite four. Oh, that's even better. That's a zombie killing sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a people stabbing sword. This is a zombie stabbing sword. Fair trade. I'll, I, I mean, with this iron, I'm gonna go get that gold. But All yeah, right. I could, I could set that aside and then let me know when the armor's ready, and then I can swing by and pick it up. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking though. Speaking, since you saw a name tag, we should extract very easily. Break yep. this block. I do this, and then put it behind me. All right. Okay. Bye. All right, see you later. Now that was a successful negotiation. Ryan had no idea just the sheer amount of gold that I had found, so handing him over a few blocks was a paltry cost compared to a full set of diamond armor without having to spend the time to get it. I jumped back on Hunter and started riding back into the city, wanting to get to a place where I was secure and safe and collect all of that gold before somebody else happened to potentially stumble across that area and I would default on my promise having had it be looted first. As I made my way up into the base, however, I found it partially flooded. My dog apparently attempted to be pushed out the window and Shadow was lurking on the streets below. Something had gone wrong. Hello. Hey, how are you? Um, I'd be careful putting light on because Kim has been wandering around here murdering people. Oh, has he? Yeah, he, oh, okay. killed, he, he definitely killed me at least once. Yeah, I'm, I'm running around the city at night because I'm trying to see if I can find people's places. Yeah, I've just been searching for irradiated apples and every time I find one, I eat it. <laughs> so, question. I had, I had a rough couple days. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard. How bad off are you? I was I was down to six hearts. Oh dang! And then I'm at nine now. Oh okay, so you're better off. You're better off. That's good. Oh yeah, a lot better. There's a potion. There's that a potion you can brew instead of a golden apple, instead of a god apple to oh. get a heart. That's good information. I need spider eyes. There's tons of them in the nuke city. Okay. Yeah. So. Here's the thing. If you can get me spider eyes, I can craft the potions because it also requires a lot of levels. So I've just okay. been slowly getting up to like, you need to be level 35 to make them. Oh, okay. But then yeah, once been... you would drink the potion, you'd get a heart. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. I'll go get some spider eyes and I'll, okay. I guess I'll come back here. Yeah. I'm, I'm around here so I can get here with relative ease. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Bye. Bye. Now, I don't know who it was who went into my base and tried to kill my dog. It might have been Shadow, it might have been somebody else, but at least Grunts was safe, everything was fine. I immediately jumped down into the warehouse. Since others were around my area, I wanted to secure this resource as soon as I could. And I spent all the time getting all of the gold blocks from, from all the decorations and structures around here when Sean sent me a message. The farm by the bridge, get here now. Now this seemed ominous. Maybe it was my boss looking to get me new orders, but it seemed like he was trying to get me to find Kim's base, not catch Kim out somewhere. So what did he want me to do? Either way, I wasn't going with the gold in my pocket, so I went back up to my hotel room and stashed it. Upgrading myself to a full set of iron armor, I'd still be undergeared compared to everybody, but I had spares and I was able to handle that fight. And my whole thought process was those awful milk potions that I had drank a few days ago back at the airport, the ones that made me nauseated and blind. If I could throw one of those onto somebody else, they would be easy pickings to be critted out and killed and I could get my heart back. But as I went to brew them, they turned into uncraftable potions with no effects. I even tested it, throwing it down at my feet and well, Absolutely nothing happened. While I was doing that though, Sean messaged me that I was gonna wait nearby that location and then track Kim from leaving there back to his base. That was Sean's plan, or at least that's what he communicated to me. That felt unnecessarily risky, but it was something that I kind of had to do. My life was on the line. As I was preparing to leave though, I saw Kim's name tag on the street underneath me and I knew I had him caught now. Instead of heading to the farm, I went the opposite direction, where Kim had come from, doing a little bit of looting to grab what I could and just trying to find a base that was illuminated somewhere that I could potentially get access to. And as I was standing and waiting, the nerves started to set in. I think I've narrowed down Kim's base. If I'm right and I see him enter that space, my mission is complete and I've successfully done what Sean asked. If I'm wrong, that's a separate problem for a separate day. 
So now we just wait. And I didn't have to wait long. Only after about five minutes, Sean sent another message in chat. Come to the farm. We've got Kim. That was A, very public, and B, very unexpected. And alarm bells were immediately running off in the back of my head. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. This feels like a trap. This feels definitely like a bugaboo style trap. And I don't know what to do with him right now. Uh, I don't know what to do with him right now. So my first thought was, let's go check the base, see if that's where Kim is held up. And it turns out, nope, it was a barbell, which, ah, uh, super unfortunate. But at least that makes me a little bit more confident about my base. Maybe people would pass it off as something that the map was built with. Sean was very insistent, however, and I was very, very nervous. I've been bugabooed before, and I'm not about to have that happen again. So I walked and I waited listening closely and trying to catch glimpses of a conversation. See what they were up to, what they were planning, and who was working with who. Shadow was here, which made me a little nervous. He had just told me that he hadn't seen anybody the entire game. And Kim <laughs> only halfway sounded like a prisoner. It's not Who's, who was your friend, exactly? <laughs> we're rough around the edges now. Kim, it was you that, that uh, you sealed your grave here. You dug now, while this was happening, I was also messaging Ryan, trying to give him a little bit of an advance notice and warn him about the very obvious trap that was happening. Because who says this is not a trap, aside from people who are about to click you into a trap? Every fiber of my being was telling me that I should not go through with this. I should just wait and observe. But at some point in time, you just gotta send it. Ryan! Where's Ryan? There you are, Ryan! Drink Look at Kim. this! Kim, drink the potion. We're here. Drink the potion, Kim. We're here We're here purely for Kim, do not worry. I know it looks It looks like it could be a trap for all of us, but what it is happened? not. It really does look like a trap, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. And I, it seemed like it would kill you. I got Lagundo's upstairs, Lagundo! Really Lagundo, get down here! Bring him down, Robert. Escort him down. Lagundo, come, come. Ryan? No, not Lagundo. Get him this out really, of there. This, re this really stinks of, like, Ryan, yes. a cult. <laughs> We're not going to kill you. This is your chance to get a heart from Kim. Oh, if you, you do not claim your heart from Kim, we will take it from you. Well, so that doesn't must... seem very fair. Oh, there you are, Lagundo. Well, here, Ryan, oh, you, you are here. Lagundo. Ryan, do you on. want a potion? It'll help you, like, give you speed and stuff. Oh, no, Come on, Lagundo. This multiple. this is not a trap. Okay. I promise. This is not a trap. I've caught two of you in a lie in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> I, I, what do you mean, a lie? <laughs> I've Lagundo. caught two of you in a lie in the last 20 minutes, and you're going to tell me that this is not a trap? Kim, because I mean, bring Kim hearts. upstairs, and no, we, I'll... I, I, we can't bring him up. We have him in an obsidian tomb down I created here. an obsidian tomb for him. I've already heard you say, get back in the cell two or three times at this point, so I know Kim's walking free. No, no. And He's I'm going to end up right but... next to him. <laughs> no, you won't. That's the... That's what I'm worrying about. We have... I... You haven't killed anyone, Willie. Kim, Kim's the one Ow. that's killed you. I know, and I want to get revenge, but I don't want to die being promised it when it's not going to be delivered. Uh, right now, you have the option of walking away from here with an extra heart, or you have the option of respawning. <laughs> There's so many zombies out here. Why is there no option of don't go into the murder basement? Because it's for, it's murder basement for Kim. No one else is going to be murdered here. <laughs> so much. I'm going to get killed. My, I'm going to get killed. This goes Those against come down here, my look, better everyone, judgment. The only person on the server that we want dead is this computer man right here in this. How do I get in? Because right uh, now there's just zombies where are you? everywhere. Where are you? Oh, uh, I'm on the roof. Come down in here. <laughs> this Have is your... such a trap! It's not Figure a trap. It it's not a trap. You guys need to get in. There's so many zombies. Just get in. <laughs> I'm trying to oh clear God. it out. Sean, but... How, Sean please. You can come, 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 so come, 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 I'm, come, come. I'm going to need some kind of assurance close here. It, close it, close it. You can walk out of here. Lagunda, nothing's going to happen to you, I promise. I don't, yeah, I don't trust y'all for a second. I know, I know, I get it. It's, Look, I know it's tough. Cool? I, I promise, cool? Lagunda, it's nothing. I promise. Sean, yeah, I, you also Sean. promised me you were oh my, my brother, Shadow. <laughs> my know, nether but, bro. But... I heard We're all here for one thing, Lagundo. That's it. Look. Look who we have. Oh 
Oh. Look at him. Look who we got in the corner. No! Get the man away from me! Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I want my heart! Whoa, whoa, whoa. I want my heart! Simple. Oh, you killed him. <laughs> what? Where? So, um... What just happened? Uh... uh -oh. He hit the ground too hard. How? I knew it. Yeah! Okay. We're gonna pause here for a second. Let's count the red flags. Do we need to count the red flags? I'm not, I, ugh, I'm mad at myself. Future me watching this video back is now looking at past me, the dumb, dumb, stupid head that is past me and just thinking, ugh. So do me a favor, leave me a comment about day four and tell me whether or not you would have gone into the murder basement and trusted Sean. I will be judging you all harshly for your responses. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little heated right after this happened and I logged off for a few hours just trying to clear my head. And then I got a message from Sean and he gave me some coordinates and told me that he was gonna make it up to me. And when I logged in, it turned out the chaos had continued after I had disconnected. Now I know we have some resources, but I'm gonna save those because... <laughs> well, I'm gonna try going to these coordinates and see. Negative seven. Oh, geez, okay. I have to cross the whole map to get to those. But as I was harvesting potatoes, another radio broadcast came through. So hey, um, uh, I, I'm here in the radio tower. I just wanted to get this out to anyone that's, uh, y you know, um, still alive. I found a tape and listened to it myself, but I didn't really, uh, I, I just didn't know what to make of it. Oh, I'll just put the damn thing in so you can listen. If thrills and desires are what you seek, go to a place where it can top my peak. In there you'll see mirrors and sinks, but probably no drinks, but a treasure. Okay, so... The, oh, never mind. Somebody already beat me to it. <laughs> there was a, a puzzle of some kind. Oh, and Shadow won a grenade to the face. Oh, great. So that, that's, that's pretty nasty. I don't trust John, which makes me potentially going for whatever this chest it is. A really potentially bad idea. Might cost me a heart. But if I can get some spider eyes off of Shadow, I can make more hearts. We just need levels. Luckily, there's like a bajillion zombies down on the ground. I'm gonna cook these up. I'm gonna store some of them and then we're gonna get going. Lucky me that I didn't hear that one before it was too late. You all know that I love a good puzzle and would have immediately jumped on that given the opportunity to do so. But with my supplies restocked and everything essential stashed away, just in case this was a double trap, I ventured out of the base and out towards the location that Sean had sent me. I sent a quick message to Shadow, maybe enemy of my enemy. I'm still not sure if he was the one who tried to kill my dog, but Sean seems like he's doing his own thing, so we'll see how that goes. He said he was hunting Sean right at the moment. I looted one of the factories right by my base, finding a bunch of speed potions inside, which would be good for getting a little bit of extra mobility. And right underneath the hotel that I was staying in, I found a subway tunnel. Now, this could be a really advantageous way to navigate the entire map end to end without getting spotted. That's what I was really worried about with these coordinates being so far away. So I just ran down the tunnel. It was kind of boring and uninteresting, so I'm gonna cut through it a little bit here, making my way into another subway station, where it looks like if all the command blocks were working, we'd actually be able to fast travel with this. But we were playing on a slightly unsupported version. This might take me is exactly how far I need to go. Sean is being, honestly, quite terrifying right now. And after he's just genuinely killed several people, yeah, I'm not surprised at this point. But even without any light, this is not spawning anything. So, so far, so good. We're just gonna skip past this one. As I continued making my way down the tunnels, trying to get closer to the cords of the item stash, I came into another station, and then it opened up to what looked like potentially the crater from a nuclear bomb. Oh. Oh, and that's, nope, nope. We're just gonna not touch that. All of the buildings here were sheared off. All of these streets were filled 
with rubble and debris. And I had no doubt that this place was covered in zombie spawners. But I had a clear goal. I knew what I wanted. I wanted to see if Sean was potentially trying to trap me again, or if he actually felt guilty for that and was willing to work together. As I ran up closer to the casino, I was constantly looking over my shoulder, trying to see if anybody was trying to keep tabs on or would see me coming or going. And when I thought I saw an opportune moment, I went and I looted the chest. Oh. Golden apple, soul sand, region potion, a totem. Now that, that is a heck of an apology for killing somebody, I'll just have to say. I tried to get the diamonds out of the slot machines, but the map makers were a little bit prepared for that. And I replaced all of the carpets to make sure that it didn't look like I had been here at all. But as I was starting to head back, my whole thought process was, wait, if you were playing this map normally, this is like the high tier area that you need to be wearing a gas mask to be able to access and there's tanks sitting around here. So I jumped into one of them, trying to loot the chest at the back, which was locked, so I broke it, and I found three grenades just sitting there. That, that was a game changer right there. Even if nothing from Sean panned out, this turned the tide of my playthrough. With my pockets entirely filled of high tier loot, either gathered on my own or collected from a potential new ally, I jumped into a minecart, which made the trip home way faster. That was until I hit the uphill portion of the whole course and it didn't really work out then. And once I returned through the subway tunnels near my hotel, I climbed up the vines on the side of the building and returned home. Stashing the grenades away in the barrel, which is just to keep them safe for now. And just as I was doing that, I saw Shadow get his kill. Sean was down. And then he wasn't. He killed himself with a grenade too. So just one heart evaporated into the ether. So wait, what was that? Forge was killed by Shadow. Shadow gained a heart. Shadow killed Shadow. Shadow lost a heart. Forge Labs lost a heart. Oh, that was a really close engagement there. So they grenaded each other into this thing. After their exchange, Forge logged off and Shadow, Shadow came over my way looking to get into my house when he thought I might not have been looking. Hey, Shadow, what are you doing? I'm coming Shadow, up. Shadow, you're on the wrong roof. Oh, oh I just, I gotta give you the spider eyes. Hey. I'm sorry, I'm really nervous all of a sudden. Listen, I had no idea Sean was gonna do that. I, mm -hmm. you know- Sorry, I'm just really nervous because those grenades are busted and they can just kill you in one shot and that's kind of unfair. No. -uh. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. So I got that radio broadcast from Rob. I went to the uh, thing for the riddle and I got killed. Yeah, as soon as I opened the door, it like threw a grenade at me. I want to kill Robert. <laughs> do you have the means to kill him? Oh yeah, I do. He knows where you live. Oh, so he's the one who flooded my house. Maybe, yeah. Well, yeah, well, I know where you live because it's right there. <laughs> Cause we were over there talking and when I was running back, I, I seen the bridge and I was like, I must be his house. To be fair, the bridge was here before I was. Uh, was it? Okay. Yeah, the bridge was here first and I just kind of took up residence in that floor because I figured it's pretty secure. So look, I, I just want to survive. I, I genuinely just want to survive. I'm not playing any games or anything else like that. I just want to make it to the extraction and get yeah. out. That's that's where I was at. That's why I wasn't attacking anybody or whatever. We have, yeah, we have what three days before that comes. Yeah. As soon as he comes, I'm I'm killing him. <laughs> I don't want to be a party to this. But yeah, okay. Yeah. So Ryan and Robert know, which means Sean knows. And you know, which means Sneeve knows. Yeah. So basically well, everybody but Kim knows where I live. <laughs> no, Sneeve doesn't know. I never mentioned it to him. Well, I wouldn't feel bad. It, like, I figure you two are partnering up, and that's fine. I'd like to ally with you both. Like, tentatively here. I'm being cautious because I, I always seem to get betrayed in these things. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't betray you. Just Twice in a row? <laughs> no, no, it's just, just you and me. I wouldn't betray you. I should get some water. So I don't fall. Here. Oh, thank you. 
I have spares. So I thought, I gave him a bucket. We're probably friends now. Shadow could be a potentially useful ally. If he had more grenades, and he definitely has a grudge against Robert and Sean, he could just be something that I kind of point in that direction and let him do his thing. Because at this point, I don't know how much Sean remembers that I was supposed to help him kill Kim, because I kind of did. So it felt like that deal was maybe over. As the sun rose, Rob was coming to meet, and he was either pretending or just honestly forgot where my house was. So I gave him a little bit of coaxing, since everyone on the server basically knew where I was at that point, and just invited him over to have a conversation. Hi, jump onto that building in those torches. I know it's good sound. No, 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 not that one. That is Shadow up there. He just came over to talk. We were talking. Shadow, you got to come a little closer. <laughs> making sure you didn't put like lace it with TNT or something. No, I didn't lace it with TNT. I didn't even place those torches there. Shadow okay. did the last time we spoke. Please don't. <sighs> I hate. I hate how I'm wrapped in with Sean. You know? It's so. It's so. No, uh, no. It it is literally everyone at this point. <laughs> I, I feel it. I feel it. I'm gonna be completely honest here, right? Like. I called that from a mile away. And the I'm thing, the thing is, like, I, I had no intention of any doing anything to you. I wanted you to get revenge. No, nope. I, I pause. Here I am standing on this roof, and here are these two standing on the other roof. Now I'm trying to talk and make alliances with both of them, and I'm pretty sure they hate each other. So in retrospect, <laughs> it just wasn't smart. Shadow, no! Oh my god! Shadow, no! <laughs> Dude! I had to. No, you didn't! Now they're gonna think I was just trying to kill them! Well, what the heck am I gonna do now? Now everyone hates me! This is a lost cause. Well, there goes my sword. And any potential for an alliance. They're gonna fight. They're gonna fight! No, 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 don't do this. Oh no. I was hoping no one was gonna find it right away. I didn't I didn't think anyone was, was gonna look for it right now. And then my, and then my... Sean killed oh, me again. Shoot. He said... hey, wait, There's a lot of zombies right here. Does anybody have a bed? Look under uh, yeah, 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 hold on, let me sleep. It's okay, I I gotta sign off anyway. You guys can talk. DC, DC. Okay. They might kill me the second I log back in. <laughs> Okay, I think shout out shadow left completely. Um, I'm putting your sword in this ch in this chest, okay? The sword is in there. Okay, look, look, look. Genuinely, like, I just want to survive. I, I know. Make it to the I, end of I this felt one. so bad when Sean killed you. I think Sean Sean is literally like infesting everyone right now. He's infecting everyone's minds with with what he's doing because he's the he's true saying, virus. If he look, I have no reason to trust you. <laughs> I know you don't. I get that. So as you can see, like my play, like you see how spontaneous and just crazy Sean is. Well, Sean. So that's why, like that's that's why I'm I'm like, like teaming up with him, sort of, in cahoots, yada yada. I am. I'm on here his good side. For being on y'all's good side and just being on doing my own thing, being out of the chaos. Being maybe a source of information if everybody talks, but I'm not getting involved in the killing. I'll trust you. If you hang a barrel from that sign right there, I know it's from you, and anything you put in, whatever the outcome is, is all split with you evenly. Oh my god, you got you got me wanting to read documentation for all the mods we have. Good luck. All right, we'll do. Okay, bye. See you later. See ya. It's okay, Grunts, we're gonna make it. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm telling everybody to collect me spider eyes. It seems like a generally worthless item, right? Well, with them, I can craft hearts. And it's the most valuable knowledge on the entire server. It's 
day five, and zombies are faster and more powerful. Not in the damage sense, but in the knockback ability. Meaning, if they catch you near a ledge, you're probably falling off of a building. As I logged in, I thankfully found my base undisturbed, but I got into a conversation with Sneeve to start planning what our next steps could be. Survivors. The survivors. survivors. I don't yeah. know how this works in the whole canon of the zombie survival, but you know what? It's good to just talk to you, buddy. It's been so long. Um, what, what we could do is uh, chuck an FFT filter on the voices. <laughs> and, then, and then you chop off the low and high end and you've got yourself an impromptu radio. Tell you what, I'm holding a compass and I'm going to say I found a walkie-talkie. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. Sneeve, <laughs> Sneeve, I found you. I found <laughs> yeah. you. Over. Shh. <laughs> you found what over? <laughs> I found you over. Uh, yeah, I got got. I got got hard. Most people have told me that that wasn't the plan. That's so I what I've heard, but after yeah. being betrayed, it's hard to believe it. <laughs> being the guy that, <laughs> that had suffered. Three people walk into a bar, and the punchline is Laguna. Shadow basically tied me to you just there. <laughs> yeah. Whether I wanted it or not. So tell you what, the thing I need right now is levels. If you would trust me, I would like to like come say hi and we can talk and we can try to figure things out. There's a potion you can make. And I think I can craft a heart. How 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 is it how is it made? Or, or are you keeping that a secret? I'm keeping that a secret until because I'm the only person who looked through all the all the stuff. This is my ace up my sleeve. Okay. is I know how to craft a heart. Now this is a big moment because I'm revealing that I can do it, but I'm not telling them how. I wanna keep that information valuable and controlled just to me, so I have a little bit of leverage in this situation. I've already been double-crossed once before in this scenario, and I don't want that to happen again. I need to finally negotiate from a place of power. Well, I know, I know Shadow really wants to have you in our alliance. And if you're moving somewhere new, and if we're potentially going to be working together, I want to propose moving in together. You have to get confirmation from Shadow. You can, if, I'm going to poke him right now and be like, hey, can you get on? Because I think the three of us really need to talk. Yeah, yeah. Like, full stop, I don't trust Kim right now. I was I was going to trust him when he said he was neutral. I just like was like, mm, I'm not saying anymore. I don't trust this man anymore. <laughs> and thankfully, he was available. So he jumped on, and we all jumped into the call. He found a walkie-talkie, too. And I made the initial proposal. So we, we found these walkie-talkies over. Oh, yeah. Over. <laughs> yeah. Last night, your play, right? You tied us together. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just I You kind of made me complicit to attempted murder. My thought is, do you just want to base together? Yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense because uh, Sean and Robert are basing together. And, and Kim. I don't know Kim may be on our yet. side anyway, yeah, but... Maybe. Right now, I'm grabbing a bunch of wood and resources from the Believe sign, and I'm leaving only Lie back. Lie, lie left. <laughs> Just because I think it will be really good and, and thematic. Do you, I mean, I can, I can come over, over and help you transfer stuff if that's what... That's part of what I need. It's literally everything on the line. If we die or if someone logs in and attacks us, that's it. Like there's, there goes all of my supplies, all of everything. If you two want to head over this way and then we can co-base and everything, I have almost all of what I need. I just need a safe place to do it in time. I am so nervous about this. I'm not going to lie, y'all. No, I promise. Like I I've promise. Like I'll give you it. like a thousand bucks if I betray you. Deal! Uh, Deal! I, I, it was I on video! You. Everybody that was on video, I caught him on camera! I, I caught him on like, camera! What? Okay, so I suddenly feel way more confident about this alliance. Like, extremely, supremely confident about this alliance. So, yeah, sure, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just move in together. What could go wrong? Everything will be fine. So at this point, um, come on grunts, let's go. This is where everything was on the line. If we were attacked or surprised or one of us died to zombies, that was a ton of loot, a ton of experience, and a ton of progress lost. This is probably the most tense I was up until this point throughout the entire scenario. Oh I mean, my. 
This is this the ship you blew up? Yeah, yeah it had a nuke in it, and uh, and uh, I blew up with it. Whew. It's gonna be a whole thing. Like I flipped the switch for ignition or whatever, and I flipped it, and then it's like you have sixty seconds to evacuate the boat. Oh, okay. I was so like, it was okay. a whole thing. Yeah. Funny thing was, Lagundo. Yeah. I died in the boat and I respawned, so all the chunks un like unloaded, and then when I came back to see if I could get my stuff, the chunks watched, reloaded while it was still blowing it up. Oh and no! And it killed did you me die? again. Oh no! <laughs> Going past the nuke ships and sailing over to just on the edge of an active volcano. Man, this city is really busy. There was an underwater base that Sneeve was walling off, create a little pocket of air underwater. It seems to be a thing that he really likes to do if you watch these videos a lot. So with the main front base and then a secondary tunnel in the back for a lot of crop growing, this could really be pretty safe. I helped shore up the walls and dunk all of my stuff into the chest for now. We'll worry about organizing and decorating later. And we headed up towards Shadow's base, which was relatively nearby and the two were not connected. His bunker in the middle of the volcano's caldera was the antithesis of stealthy. It was quite overt, but at the same time was extremely safe. There's also a kind of ruined wild westy kind of village right on the rim of the volcano with a lot of husk spawners around, which moved very fast but died to just one hit. And that that was going to be essential. We need to get up to level 35 to create these potions that will allow us to craft additional hearts, so we just had to sit there and farm zombies. We spent some time talking about potential strategy and reinforcing the area, digging a trench around the house so that zombies would fall into that and we'd be able to just make the whole process a little bit more seamless. But it took about two in-game days just grinding away at zombies and reinforcing the space to get myself up to level 35 and Sneeve was not far behind me. The only problem here was if we were gonna use his levels, I'd have to tell them how to make the potion. And this honestly made me a little bit nervous. This heart crafting potion was the only real contribution I had. And if they had that information, if they wanted to betray me, although they promised me a thousand dollars, I was still nervous that it might happen. Hello there. You'll see in a second. Oh, the hot, the hot thing. Oh, jeez. What happened? Zombie? A zombie spawned inside. <laughs> That'll happen. Oh. <laughs> All right, drink it. Let's see what happens. Yes! Oh, Did here it you go. Yes, it does. Right. But it go. works. It works. Sweet. <laughs> it I works. Can, I can stop hunting for irradiated apples. Yeah, yes. All we got to do is zombie hunt. I have all the ingredients, the, literally the only ingredient that I was I was short on was spider eyes. I'm so putting it, this what is What is it, spider eyes and then like 35 levels? Spider eyes, 35 levels, and a bottle of water. That's it? That's it. Oh, wow. Why am I telling you? Shoot, this was supposed to be just my secret knowledge. <laughs> well, no, but because <laughs> if we're gonna, if we're gonna... No, no, I'm just, I'm just making fun. I'm just, I'm just making fun. But yeah, a bottle with three spider eyes around, like a bottle in the corner, three spider eyes around it and 35 levels. And it'll say it's gonna craft an empty bottle. And as soon as you click it, it, uh, it's like the gods shine upon your tribute. Uh, I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna make a barrel and I'm hiding the, these crossbows. Because the last thing I want is them to be found by somebody hide, who happens them, to find the base. Actually, you know what? I'm we're, I'm putting this in my ender chest. Oh my gosh! Did you guys know Sean's on? He's right there. What? <laughs> no, I, Don't I thought... you do that! The second you said that, I hit tab and I had a heart oh, attack. Hey. There, there's this zombie. It looks like he was crouching over. I was like, "Is that Sean?" Shadow memeing aside, it was time to actually make this place look good. So we spent a little bit of time setting up the crops in the back area so we could grow carrots and potatoes and turn those into golden carrots at some point in the near future. Set up an enchanting space in the front and use some bricks to decorate the wall so it just looked a little bit more like a base and not just a random hole in the ground. This might be the apocalypse, okay? But I have standards. It's like that super soldier serum you've got so much of. Woo! Look at yes! that! Yes! <laughs> there he is. And then uh, there's Sep. You have a. <laughs> How many of those do you have? I just. This is my last one. I was gonna use it. Save it for. I've... Save it for extraction night. Maybe Here's the it. thing. 
We cannot let people know that these potions exist. This is the most classified information on this entire server right now. Oh, for sure. I ain't telling anybody else. Dominion ride or die. Let's go. Dominion yeah. ride. For real this time? Listen. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm a Dominion. I wasn't invited. Listen, like I said, you were boneless. I was Sean, gonna invite you. Sean put the I, down I to me, and then Robert, if Robert added their nine apples. Robert, <laughs> Robert uh, added to the fire. Dominion ride or die. Yeah, let's win this yeah. thing. Do yeah. It. I ended the day by doing more chores and decorations and building around the base, feeling far leagues and above better than where I was when I had started this day. I'd come out of potentially the lowest point of the entire scenario and was now potentially in the strongest position to win this thing amongst everyone on the server. We're gonna have the gear advantage, we're gonna have the heart advantage, and we're gonna have the tactical advantage going into the last two days of this thing. Hey, what's up? So, um, I was checking in on the footage, and I was noticing that, like, there's nothing there for day six. Is there something wrong with that? Or did you forget to upload it? No, I, I actually didn't get much time to play on the server on day six. So there's no footage for day six? No. Come on, everything was getting tense. There was all the drama. It's coming close to extraction day. What are we doing? Come on. Don't worry. We'll, we'll put in some kind of joke to cut the tension, give everybody a little bit of laugh, and then we'll run a YouTube ad. And then we'll be back and we'll just cut straight to day seven. Gotcha. Day seven it is. Perfect. Talk to you later. Adios. Bye. Day seven. It's the dawn of the final day. Zombie spawns are now doubled and the zombies are smarter than ever before. It's almost on par with everybody else who's a human who's playing on this server. And the drama started literally the second I logged in. Okay, there's something on the floor. <laughs> Feeling hungry, we need a farm. Bagundo. Oh, oh, whoa. You scared me. Oh wait till you're ready. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> I just logged in. <laughs> okay. Feeling hungry. We need a farm. Dominion ROD. Ride or die. We have a farm, right? That's what I thought. I don't know who left this here. Can you come back here? I just want to see what yeah. this is. Yeah. So the whole compromise thing, I'll fill you in. Yeah. XP I don't know. farm. Oh. <laughs> XP oh. farm compromise? Yeah, so... <laughs> I was out getting, I was farming XP. I was up in the building, but I wasn't actually farming. I was just talking to myself about getting Grenade, food. Need gold, carrots. Oh my God, golden carrots. Oh, oh yeah. I can make my crossbows multi-shot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Robert found me up there and oh. I ran down before he even went up. So I took off in the west direction to think that, because I told him I was just here uh, mining obsidian, which there's a little patch up there where it kind of, yeah. where you can kind of see it. So yeah. I, hopefully I was hoping he would have thought that. And then I stayed on the west side pretty much all day until he got off because I didn't want to come back and kind of give the impression that I was living over here. Good call. So anyway, I went back I to the XP carrots. farm. And it's rigged. Oh, I'm so it, excited. It, it, it's rigged to blow. It's rigged to blow. Yeah. Like how the experience farm rigged is to rigged to blow. Because I was going to, I'm still only at 10 hearts. I was going to. I can show you a different spot. It's actually a lot easier um, and safer. But okay. um, don't acknowledge it, because if, if, if we acknowledge it, that it's there, that he rigged it, then he knows that we're still around the area. So our base had potentially been compromised. There was a break in the wall and through all of our security and defenses, the spot, the location that we thought was really protected had been found. I sat and coordinated with Shadow for a good 20 minutes and we had a plan. We would go ranging out, trying to find either a new location to temporarily base out of in the last day before extraction, or attempt to find Sean and Robert's base and repay the favor. Are you just yeah. not swimming? Do you just walk on water? Am I? I don't I see feel you like swimming. I'm swimming. For me, you're just running. <laughs> I got depth strider, whatever that is. Oh, now you're swimming. Oh, you're so much faster. While Shadow was busy 
flexing on me with his super soldier powers. While that was happening though, Ryan messaged me and it was time to potentially meet. I still had a deal with him, a bunch of blocks of gold in exchange for a full set of diamond armor and a diamond tool or two. We did end up trapped in the middle of a street in the middle of the night, which kind of worked in our favor. You can really just pillar up a few blocks that they can't break, beat zombies down to get your experience to hopefully get up to level 35 for more hearts. So what you been up to? <laughs> oh, nothing. Just grinding out the hearts. I'm Being so nervous glad Robert. <laughs> that we found those potions. Yeah, I won't even drink them when they're online. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying, like classified information, right? But I'd be lying if I said that deal was all I was coming here to really discover. I had ulterior motives. It was time for the art of manipulation. There's three steps to this conversation. Giving him a little bit of info that is either outdated or irrelevant, getting useful information in return, and being able to potentially coerce him to do something that would let me off scot-free, but negatively impact those I'm fighting against. Hi. I, hi. <laughs> I, uh... You got some issues. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my base stands out a bit. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Yeah, I was talking yeah. about your party guests down at the bottom. Uh, no. Uh, Are you just standing on the porch while they bother you? Well, you should really get somewhere with. There's more coming up the hill. Ryan, Ryan, there's more coming up the hill. Ryan, there's more coming up the hill. I'm at half up. Ryan! <laughs> Oh no, I just watched that happen. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Uh, A few moments later. I, I have your pants and your pickaxe. Ah, uh, thank you. Are we still friends? Yes, yes, absolutely. Sean is crazy. Okay. And then Shadow, he poisoned me. Okay. Um, so can really I didn't can, can I come in? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Please. Please come in. I need friends. Okay. Yeah, Here, so here's your pants and your pickaxe. <laughs> and this you. is ridiculous looking. <laughs> you it should is. light this up over here. But it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just I was just working on uh, you know, expanding over that way. Uh, here's your uh, here's your diamond armor that I as promised. Yo, here is your golden blocks as promised. That's step one down. I've already proven that I can carry through on our previous agreement, so my word is good. I'm trustworthy and I'm a great ally. Now we poke a little bit deeper. I've heard that there's a bounty on Sean. There's a bounty on Sean? There's a bounty on, well, there either is or is about to be a bounty on Sean. Kind of oh. want Sean dead. Um, there's like... He doesn't like, know that I don't like him. What? He doesn't, he doesn't know that I don't trust him. Yeah, I know. Oh. So, uh, hey, 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 <laughs> you Sean. were saying? <laughs> Sean? <laughs> Sean? Uh, are you here, Sean? Sean, are you here? Maybe by chance? My mans! I, I, my mans! My mans! My mans! Hey, hey my mans. No? Okay. He normally answers to that. All right, step two. I'm planting the idea in Ryan's head that killing Sean is not only in my best interest, but it's also in his. And I can actually back that up. I've proven that I'm good for it, and I'll give him the things that I've offered him before. I have a very simple request. <laughs> and uh, what's this simple request? Have you seen Mad Max? Yes. It's been a while, but I've seen it. Do you know, witness me? <laughs> So I have something I could give you that you could just walk up to Sean, drop it on the ground, and you will die. But so would he. <laughs> well, I mean, I already grenaded him once, so I mean, hey. <laughs> so I mean, even that, if you were he volunteered for that, even if you so. he volunteered for that. Yeah, he uh, he was like, that wasn't my heart to have, and then he just let me kill him. My like, oh, the heart that I got from Kim. Uh, yeah, and then he stole from you. He killed and me, then... and then you ki You got to kill him. All right, step three. I think I have Ryan on the hook to potentially take out Sean, or at least take him down a peg. So let's see what other information he could get, because he was acting as pretty much a free agent for this entire past week. 
Just saying, like, I'm pretty sure I'm Persona Non Grata. I think they don't trust me. I'm solo. I'm just running around doing my thing. You're the only person that I've been talking to because we had this deal beforehand and it yeah. seems like we're good. Uh, I know I was nervous about it being a 1v5. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> it's not the case anymore. That makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, I've heard, like, apparently Rob and Sean blew up Shadow and Sneep's base and all sorts, Wait, all sorts of stuff has gone down. Yeah, like, all sorts of stuff has gone down. I haven't seen i haven't seen kim since i killed him i know where kim lives you know where kim lives it, yeah where does me kim and, uh, in the city we uh in the nuked city actually um, oh me and robert stumbled across he actually has like the firework charged crossbows which oh um, that's a good idea it really is yeah he got it from me he killed me with one of them <laughs> Sorry, I was well, gonna do a whole bit about like, oh, I have no idea. I couldn't, wow. I couldn't start laughing. <laughs> Step four: point out that he has no reason to trust me, and I could potentially be lying to him. And I kind of am, but not entirely. I'm just not mentioning certain things and getting Shadow to be able to be live commentary, fact checking everything that Ryan is saying. That's definitely reassuring. Um, so I think we're, I'm going to leave the same way I've always left your house, if that's cool. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, pick a spot, and then, because I'm always nervous about that door, and somebody being able to just be right above it. Uh, pleasure okay. doing business. Handshake, thank yeah, you. Ha handshake as well. Uh, uh, thank you, and see yeah, you yeah. on extraction yeah. night. Alright, see you then. Okay, bye. Bye. And I will now disappear. But I left Ryan's house through the wall feeling extremely confident. I had a ton of additional info now and I knew that Ryan was on my side. And I gave up basically nothing to get that information. Just a deal that I had already agreed to days ago. So in heading back and meeting Shadow over the plane, my manipulation was appreciated. Hi, what's up? <laughs> that was funny. Uh, Some real spy stuff right there. The funny. trick about being a good liar is to make everybody believe that you're a bad liar. Well, it Damn, looks like right Ryan's not with anybody, and Sean's after him, I guess. Yeah, so I'm keeping this diamond armor. I, I, I really want to get this armor home. But we'd firmly established Ryan in at least the neutral column, potentially as an ally or confidant that we could use, or an explosive that we could aim at a target some point in the future. Just as we were walking away, though, getting out of the area, Ryan messaged me right away. This is a good thing. He trusts me. The problem is he's telling me that Sean was there, which means he potentially had heard everything, even though Shadow was there to give us cover. Shadow and I immediately bolted, getting out of that area as quickly as possible, purling over to a few of the houses that we really hadn't explored because it was kind of a non-populated, very sparse part of the map. When you're starting to wrap up, I left, so they could have been, you know, coming over at that point. Just passing? Yeah. Okay, we probably need to either get somewhere safe for farming or just keep running until home. As we were running, there was no way we were gonna make it all the way back home. And I kind of didn't want to risk heading directly there when we knew Sean was actively in play on the board. So we headed off to another set of buildings and just got up onto the roof to get away from the zombies. And I dug my way in and I had to log off for a little while. And that time would serve me extremely well, providing a bit of a buffer from other players who might be out hunting and giving me some private time to be able to accomplish my plans a bit later. And when I logged back in, things ramped up quickly. When I reconnected later that day, I had two priorities. One, reunite with my teammates, and two, grab a bunch of dyes so I could use them to craft additional explosive rockets so I could use my whole Gatling gun idea to potentially take somebody out. I had to do a decent bit of zombie farming in the middle of the street because I also want to get up to level 35 so I can craft additional hearts. And I kind of ended up in what I assume is the Playboy Mansion with a bunch of gold being offloaded in tanks. So of course, you know, I was taking that too. But it's when I walked up onto this little what I'm assuming is a Navy attack boat, and I unlocked a few dispensers that everything started going my <gasps> way. Oh. oh my god. So with a bunch of rockets in my pocket, I was happy to see Shadow log in, and I started heading back towards the base when he messaged me. Our bases were compromised. Hey. What's up? I just got oh. in here, but that's broken. And I was in here before I logged off. I went away, but I don't know why that's broken. Okay, we should be very careful in touching anything. It could have been a drowned. But would they break it without anybody here? 
I don't know. Hard to say. I got a little scared because Rob announced that he pillared up over Sean's base and he was trying to fake it like they were fighting. So I went up and seen it that he kind of towered over to m over my base and I was scared that they were inside. So I went over to, th to their base and I um, stole everything from them. <laughs> So another montage of Shadow and I just trying to talk strategy, play chess, and try to understand, anticipate, and counteract everybody else's moves before they made them. Sean was talking a little bit about a beer factory in chat, and we thought that might be a good idea to go out and investigate, just trying to keep quiet and keep eyes and recon on our opponents. But before we could do that, we needed to understand the damages or the level of compromise that our bases actually were. So we headed up to the top of the volcano and I kept overwatch while Shadow slowly made his way inside. And it was maybe 10, 20 minutes of Shadow just sitting in that base, no message, no indication, no chat, and I was just so worried. Was this a trap? Was somebody gonna jump out and attack me while I was watching this base that was totally empty? I had no idea. But after a few minutes, and just about when I was starting to get really concerned, he gave me the all clear. I gotta be honest, this does not feel clear. Something about this feels off. It does, but it's clear inside. My only thought process is maybe they came here for obsidian, for something that they have planned. I don't know, they, they've been, Looking for me? But I feel like we need to treat it, everything as compromised. Like, we just need to be on the move. I wish Sneeve were on. We could just grab everything valuable and book it. That's pretty much what I'm doing right now. So if you want... Can I, I, like, I, can I break in through a wall? I don't I don't trust the... The door? Yeah, I don't trust the door. Turtle Head's useful if we could push a fight underwater. At this point, it was clear. It was time to move. Both of the bases had been compromised. So we grabbed anything that was still potentially useful, threw it into our pockets, and went into the city, trying to find a place that would work as a more central location, but also doing a little bit of hunting. If we could happen to see Robert or Sean and kill them, then we don't have to worry about this. We have a supreme gear advantage right away. The problem we had was trying to figure out a place. Sean was busy threatening everybody in the chat into going into his murder torture dungeon or something like that, but we weren't really paying him any mind. Moving through a bunch of different areas, through the train, through the rail yard, and then heading our way over towards that beer factory. Now this was relatively close to where I had based before, but I had not gone inside this specific building. And the importance of this location was lost on me until later, right after the game was over. Go watch the BTS video on Lagoon Dose. But we stood on top of that roof, silently observing, trying to catch a whiff of anybody else in the area for a full Minecraft day before I just ran out of patience and needed to talk. Makes me nervous. <laughs> I just can't, I can't sit in silence this long for this long. No, I think, I think he's just saying this is a trap so that we come here. With our stakeout of the beer factory a bust, we thought it might make sense to head back home. Potentially this was a double cross or a double bluff to lure us away from our base so it could be properly raided with us online and halfway across the map. Or we're playing 4D chess and they're playing checkers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just not doing anything. And we're just overthinking it and they're just standing in a zombie farm somewhere at this point. Hey, yeah. if you're watching this video, if you're watching this video and it's day six, and it's about halfway through the recording, and you see this message, I want you to comment exactly what they were doing when I sent that message. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm gonna go, we're gonna go watch this video and you're gonna see me going, ah! And it's just, they're just standing in a hole. Meanwhile, we're like super concerned for the big brain play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he was talking about it. He's definitely recording this. Oh no! Oh! What? Kim! Kim! <laughs> well, now we know it'll be in that video. They were hunting Kim. Oh, Kim. Okay. Never mind. This was not some big elaborate double cross. It looks like they were hunting Kim and Kim was able to kill both of them, which was huge. It also meant that he was collecting on Shadow's bounty that he had put out on Sean's head. So we needed to deliver a God Apple over to Kim to give him an extra heart. Sneeve doesn't trust Kim. I don't really trust Kim. I know he killed them, but I still, I don't know. He's very neutral. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm just gonna go drop this off probably far away, not close to here. Probably yeah, on the other I, side. I'll, I'll go with you just so you're not solo, and then we'll run back. Okay, I'm just gonna oh. take a boat over. Yeah, I, I can just ride with you. So we had the idea. I have a turtle helmet. I can just live underwater for a really long time. Shadow's gonna confront Kim, talk to him face to face with me waiting just underneath the surface to be able to jump up if things go bad. And right after we had finished the plan, Kim arrived and I just had to sit there quietly Hello. and wait for my signal. Nice, do you have a, you don't have an ender shot so I can just throw it into it real quick. Actually, you know what? why don't you just eat it? But I'm worried. Should I just well, eat it now? Yeah, well, I kind of want to. Gives you, it's, it's <laughs> I know he found me in the area. I don't know. He, I don't know how he found me, but he did. Maybe he just had a inkling. I'm not sure. Anyway, what do I'm I do gonna, now? I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> go find yourself a base, I guess. Wait till the extraction and. Yeah, I think I just have to say put somewhere, just like hide for it. <laughs> for yeah, pretty time. much. I, w I would even just dig in the side of that mountain. It's pretty far west, or go even to the stadium or anything. No, it's it's nice. I'm 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 more west, not right next to the stadium, but farther that way. No, I'm like I'm just in the woods. Oh, yeah, okay. I just I got I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of moving, so. <laughs> It's like I'm I'm hiding in the woods. I'm not putting much effort into it. I believe you would die too, so I guess I have to hide. Oh. Okay. Well. Are no joke. Oh no, they aren't. Alright man, I'm gonna head back. You you go hide. Cause I, I positive they're probably gonna be in the water looking for you. Jeez, the boy did it. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud. <laughs> did you hear what he said how he did it? I heard a bit that they were. I I tried to get you to get him a little closer. He was. Oh, uh, we're 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 leaving the area. <laughs> uh, he. Uh, they were looking at a chest, and he threw it. <laughs> he threw it at them. And then I'm guessing walked up too soon, or he's just in the blast radius. So who cares? Yeah, he just threw it because they're both looking in the same chest. You just gotta be careful because Kim said he's gonna hide out in one of the islands. Just close. Kim's enough. at that little island I'm right nervous. off our base. I'm nervous about Kim. I was muted. I'm nervous about Kim finding our base now, though. I don't like him being this close, cause there's stuff, and he's out, and I don't trust Kim. <laughs> I like, mean, it en is en enemy of my enemy and all, sure, but mm. yeah, he he can flip flop, right? Like. With Kim potentially right by the base, and again, me being able to swim underwater pretty much infinitely, I took a big deep dive under the waves to head back towards the underwater base and get eyes on to see if it was safe. And as soon as I surfaced for a breath, there they were. Sean and Robert parked right out in front of our base location. How they found us, I have no idea, but I was immediately in a panic. I tried to warn Shadow, but he broke the surface and the two of them started chasing Shadow away. So I ran inside, brewed up a couple quick water breathing potions while he had them distracted, grabbed anything that was useful and legged it out of the base. I was swimming down underneath them where the kelp was blocking anything I could barely see. So the odds of them being able to see me was practically nil. I made a two by two box to the bottom of the ocean and took a deep, deep breath. <sighs> That was insanely tense. Okay, it's time for me to log off from here, regroup with everybody later tonight, and get ready to extract. When I logged in a bit later, only Shadow and Sneeve were online, which was huge. We could talk openly and just get together, meet up, and talk our final strategy. So we all headed over to the parking lot of the stadium to regroup there. Sneevelton? Hello. Has anyone been back to the underwater base? Uh, I was there as it was getting raided. As it was getting raided? So, we had just given Kim his apple for killing... For killing Sean. Uh, we see Sean and Robert outside. So Shadow and I leg it. They start following Shadow. I go inside, grab anything I can fit into my inventory that I think is useful and brew up a couple potions and like it and just leave. While we were standing on the car just killing zombies, I wanted to talk about where we were going next. What was our next steps? I think we have to have a plan. I think the extraction's happening in the city, right? If that's if that's the like get to the get to the top of this building to get on the helicopter, that's the zombie movie, right? 
Ooh, but what if we rig the tunnel? So we should set up a forward operating location. Like we should all log out in a place central on the map. I think that's literally all we should do. Like anything else we're gonna try to do right now is not really practical. Like we're, we're done. But for some reason, Shadow and Sneeve seemed really reluctant to potentially base up somewhere centrally in the city. They were overly cautious or concerned at the very least. My whole thought process was the next time we were logging in was for extraction night. There was no more time for the base to be found and raided. We just needed to be able to be mobile. I'm guessing maybe they thought I was trying to double cross them because the tone here definitely shifted after I finally got them to agree to my plan. No, I caught them at ours. You caught them at, you caught them at ours? Shadow. Yes. Oh, you mean like when we they're in the boat? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But they weren't, they didn't, they didn't know about the base then. They were looking straight at it. Oh, were they? They were looking straight at it. They were, they were parked right out front of it, looking straight at it. There's no way they didn't know it. No, it was there. But could they see it? Like, can Maybe. you guys see it? I didn't no. think so. I, I've, I've, I've tried to see if you can see it from the outside, both using uh, shaders and without shaders, and there is no way you can see through but the But remember, Shadow, how we found a two by one in the glass? I think that's when they found it. And then they were just like, let's come over and get the stuff from here since Rob just, since Kim just killed us. I mean, my old building's right there, which is pretty central. Yeah, but weren't they in it? So couldn't they have messed with it? They could have, but I mean, I've been there a few times already and there's nothing in there. We made our way through the ruined city, grabbing some last minute supplies in books, glass, a little bit of random resources that we can use for final potions or final enchants, making our way onto a set of roofs that actually turned out being the tutorial spawn for this map, which was dead center of everything. This was the perfect possible location for us to be able to base up and be mobile anyway that's along the way so i can kind of go with you and then we can come back here when we're done along the way where okay. well, you're going back to your base are you yeah i just I, um, I left i left things and i want to make sure i have all the stuff that i need we'll just come back here and pick one of these houses i guess i i just crafted up a bunch of tnt you're gonna light it I want to be able to light it. Oh, you want to be able to light it. Oh, I see. I, I don't see. want to light it like right now. <laughs> I was like, why do you want to light it right now? That was my plan all along. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the timing on that. <laughs> Problem. Oh, okay. Bye, guys. See ya. We'll be back soon. Okay, I'm going to... I'm just going to log off. Okay, good luck. Them leaving that suddenly and without saying anything definitely rang some alarm bells. I was afraid that they were abandoning me, wanting to go off and do their own thing, or thinking that I was going to double cross them, and then I'm not sure. I definitely thought I'd need backup. I don't think I can make it to extract all by myself. So I really hope that maybe I'm just being a little bit paranoid. At this point, we're all paranoid of each other. That's how these scenarios go. But I did a last little bit of exploring and almost broke my legs on the pavement 10 minutes before I was about to end this thing. Oh, that could have been so bad. But with that near-death experience being a bit much for me, I refilled my bucket, stacked my gear, messaged my friends, and called it a night. Tomorrow, I was either gonna get out of the city or die trying. Here we are. It's extraction night. If we die here, we die for real. And now we just need to wait for our allies who are suspiciously not here. And I'm a little concerned about that, I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually very concerned about that, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Sneeve and Shadow were nowhere to be found. I spent the day just kind of waiting in the area, moving from rooftop to rooftop, trying to hold back any zombies who got a little bit close to me and messaging my two allies, trying to figure out where exactly they were. Shadow felt like he was kind of only half answering my messages and I was starting to worry that I'd have to go it alone. So I finally decided to test out this trident and figure out how it worked. And it turns out it doubled your speed, but it reduced your half by health but there was a visual glitch and it didn't show it to you right away. So I was running around at five hearts right now, an easy kill 
And that thing was just sitting in my hotbar constantly damaging me. I'm not gonna lie, they're making me a little nervous right now. I'm st starting to get worried that they might not actually want me to leave with them whole. Oh, no, go, get out of here. Can they just climb walls now? No, there's vines there. Okay, good. Oh! Okay. Oh, that was terrifying. With the zombies getting smarter, and me misclicking, honestly, I threw a few flares up into the sky, and it turns out that's all I needed to find my friends. Hey. Hey. Not gonna lie, y'all were making me nervous. No, we just, we had to, we had to stop a sneeze real quick. He needed to get, um, a couple potions or something. Oh, y'all are making me super nervous. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they're gonna ditch me. Oh, shit. You good, Sneef? Here, yeah, Sneef. There we go. Okay, so here's here's the lowdown. Kim is still sketchy. Yeah, no, no shot. Yeah. Uh, uh Ryan is kind of a, we don't really know. Ryan's a wild card. Yeah, and Sean and Robert are definitely together. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, hey, did anybody claim that bounty that you put out on them? Uh, n no. Can I have one of those hearts? <laughs> no, sorry. I I actually wanted to bring you one. I forgot. I'm sorry. I don't have them with me. Oh, <laughs> we spent a little bit of time doing last minute coordination, grabbing some of the different potions and watching Sean in chat, just constantly try to pit people against each other using only text. And by now we all know not to trust Sean, so we just let that go. <laughs> no, it's that bugaboo. Oh. <laughs> Don't oh. do that to me again. No, oh, you, no. What? Okay, like, I might not trust Sean, but I'm still traumatized over everyone trying to kill me together. So as soon as I noticed that bugaboo in chat, I did get a little panicked. Shadow was walking right towards me. What could you expect me to do? But thankfully, no. That's not what happened this time around. But here, a night vision potion couldn't hurt. And they, they can announce it at any minute, and then we're kind of... <gasps> yes! Gonna run. It was we're going to run right... Yes! Yeah, that, was, that was the last potion for the Perfect timing! With one extra heart on my bar, we headed out. Sneeve reminded me to craft up a quick shield so I'd be prepared for combat, and that was a good idea. We made it while avoiding zombies, running out and starting to prepare ourselves in a central location in the quadrant that we knew that the extraction would take place. Shadow, I am navigationally challenged. No, I know where we're going. Okay, good. Oh my god, Sneeve's got babies on him. Yeah, <laughs> they're, my, they're my subs. They're, they're the commenters that say that you're bad at the game. They're right, but... <laughs> they're out of line, but they're right. <laughs> yeah. It but still that's, hurts, man. It still that's, hurts. That's your term, right? That's my secret. I'm always bad at the game. But we headed out of the main city proper into some of the rolling hills that surrounded the overall area to get a central location through several points of interest. But even as I was traveling with my friends, it kind of felt like they didn't exactly trust me. What this if we way. go up to, up to the top of this thing? Because we can pearl down off of it. We'd be safe from zombies that would be spawning tonight. Might I, be say, I, I say we split. Like, I don't not, like being alone. No, 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 no. It's not on the same thing. Like, I'll, I'll be up here. Oh, I can still see that's, you. that's so cool. I never even saw that thing. The spaceship. Oh, those children are still coming after you, Sneeve. Oh my god. <laughs> It's like, Daddy, I found you. We'll be doing macaroni sculptures in heaven now. <laughs> yeah. I'm nervous. This is the problem with Sean. He keeps offering these deals, but he gives like no time for it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to worry about grenades, right? Like, no. Everybody's used up all their grenades. Just the so, traps, basically. Yeah, just the, be traps. In the traps. Part of me wants to be like more near a point of interest because it sounds like it'll be on a POI. If we go down to that snowy area down there mm -hmm. and move east. We'll be kind of in the center of the two likely spots. Snowy area and move east. The, like the, the snowy area to the north. Like the yeah, yeah, yeah. North, and right? follow it east. We yeah, can we be should, central to... We'll be central to both. And we'd be coming from the back. We spent all this time in the city. New deal. <laughs> He's a desperate Trade offer. man. Who wants this to guy. join us? <laughs> this guy. This guy. I've said this in almost every video I've ever done with Sean. I love the guy, but you cannot trust him in any sort of competitive situation. He will kill you. You're stressed, aren't you, Lex? Oh, yeah, 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 intensely. <laughs> but we're basically walking through what is like, what, a Microsoft, a Microsoft Windows 
background picture right now. Yeah, desktop background. <laughs> yeah, we're we're walking through a desktop background. The rest of everybody else is playing Doom. Yeah. <laughs> but as we all waited for the extraction to be announced, it could be any time, at any moment, 10 minutes notice, and then boom, you had to move. We wanted to stay central, but not just stand in place, so we found ourselves constantly moving through the forest from treetop to treetop, getting overwatch on different areas. It provided us with great visibility, but that worked both ways. But yeah, I get wanting to come from the back, but also we're like dead in the open. That's alright. It's impossible for somebody to not see us. We have numbers. No grenades. We have the numbers. It doesn't matter if they see us. We got the health too. Gotta remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you two do. I'm only at 11. I gotta give Sean credit. He was doing everything he could to try to psyops everybody with chat. But at this point, we all know what happens when everybody on this server gets together. Yeah, I wasn't about to go meeting up with everybody just to get insta-gibbed again by having being jumped without warning. I'm sticking with my two allies and hoping for the best. Here, Ryan messaged me, following up on the conversation that I had had the previous day with him, the one that Shadow had overheard the whole thing, and yeah, I confirmed that we were not aggressive towards each other, that was just one less player I had to worry about. <laughs> we're, we're all just parked and waiting. It's just that tense moment where everybody's just waiting for like the one person to slip up and enter the crosshairs of somebody else and then BAM! Everybody this starts is, shooting. This is the calm before the storm. <laughs> yeah. If he, if he dies, he dies. And after seven days of being chased by the undead, and now this day of relative peace and quiet, it was starting to get to me, and I had bad thoughts. Kind of just want to set the whole forest on fire. Hello? I mean, you could. Hello? I'm here. I'm, okay. Don't, don't do it now. <laughs> I was waiting for you two to react to that. No, I was just getting the chat. I'm, I'm playing on widescreen, and I had to pull the screen over in the recording real quick. Oh, uh, okay. Here, here, let's get a screenshot before 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 we go to leave. Okay. All right? Screenshot. Oop. Helmet. Oh, yeah, helmet's off. Now, that screenshot, that wasn't just for posterity. I mean, it was, but I also had a thought in my mind. If they were willing to line up with me and take helmets off and grab a screenshot, they probably at least moderately trusted me, which meant maybe I was in my own head. Maybe my allies were actually my allies and I was good to go. That's the thing about these scenarios. They constantly have you guessing and second guessing any potential alliance, any potential treaty. Because at the end of the day, there's a limited number of seats on that helicopter and only a few people are making it out of here. But as we stood on the trees going into the second night of the extraction, we were just trying to talk strategy. So that building right there that we see, that's not in the quadrant. Quadrant. Which one? The one that's like the one that that's hotel, going up high. Yeah, the hotel is not. The terminal is. See? That's where he is. He's in, the, he's in the airport. Now, I know you can't trust Sean when it comes to basically anything that he says. In fact, leave me a comment down in my video where he was right when that comment was typed so I know whether or not he was lying. I'm going to go watch it, but still, you tell me too. But we thought, why don't we give the airport a little look? No, I know you're crawling, but I just... <laughs> I don't have the patience for it. <laughs> No, that's fine. I'm just trying to be sneaky. Standing on the roof of the place, being safe from the undead horde because they weren't spawning on top of this building for some reason, once again, it was a rather uneventful night. And this calm before the storm was the most uneasy I had been on the server without actually being in combat. I remember the point where Sean and Robert jumped me, blinded me, and just forced me to work for them right here. And that leading to my death, and then returning items, and then betrayal, and then Shadow trying to kill Robert right in front of me. So much had happened, and it was hard to keep track over who had tried to kill who. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. <laughs> losing? <laughs> losing? <laughs> Be more specific, Sean. I hope it's not somewhere inside. <laughs> Yeah, that's the part that scares me too, is is that option. Sean would make his promises in chat, but we all knew he was going to do that anyway. He did, however, get us all with this little announcement you see right there. We were all waiting for the announcement of a flight or an extraction, and him saying, oh yeah, the plane's departing, made us all think that, oh, we had to run to the airport. But it was just him doing a master level troll. 
And then the message we were waiting for finally dropped. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Front of the military base. Let's go. Let's go. Back. And they'd be a little more specific. <laughs> I thought they were going to be specific. I think, yeah, it, that's 10 minutes and then it's, five oh, minutes. It, it's that helicopter. Yeah, Probably yeah, yeah. the helicopter. Okay. Pearls. We threw the pearls up over the hill trying to recoup ground through the wilderness so we could approach and attack the military base from behind instead of going into what is an obvious choke point that could potentially be trapped or being held up from a better defense position. Okay, so okay. this is the plan, okay? We all attack the same person. Yeah, it keeps you do, full you court do go press. For the same person. I'm not. Yeah, three people. Gonna, that's what I'm well, saying. I'll, I'll, I'll join you after I've hit them um, with that with our plan, Shadow. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying. If with I've got three, if I've hit them both, then I'll join you. I got arrows that make them float. Oh, oh that's arrows. smart. So they can't move, but if they pearl, I guess they can move, but they'll still be floating. With the idea of let's all just get together and kill one person, you know, strategy masterminds that we are, we continued purling over the mountain, moving through the snow areas and finally getting eyes on the base. And we were not the first ones here. Oh, they're in there. They're in there. They're in there. Bunker, bunker third from the left. One, two, yeah. three. It's Robert. It's Rob. Don't trust them. Don't trust them. Are we going in? You want to? Let's go it. I potioned up, arranged my gear, got ready to pearl in, but just as we did that, Unsorted gained another heart of maximum health. He wasn't on his own anymore either, and there were new alliances being forged even right now in the last few minutes. Pearl in the right one, the very far right one. Okay. Hey boys! Yeah, he right. says as he throws something at us. <laughs> right, yeah. Seems like that. Guys, get off this roof. Sean's gone. Get off the roof. With no eyes on Sean, I pearled off, ending up on top of one of the control towers and falling down inside of it, which isolated me a little bit, but it did give me an elevated position to survey the whole battlefield. They're in the helicopter. Oh, jeez, you two scared me. I'm still, I'm yeah. hit with like a wither Careful, effect or something. there's holes in the glass. There's holes in the glass. I'm going to do something that could potentially okay. be silly. Okay, boys? Okay, let's, I'm, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to be quite honest with you. Left, 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 left. Listen, it doesn't, we don't have to fight. We can extract together. Nah. Oh my goodness. Yes, there's husks everywhere. Husks are coming, oh. husks are coming. Husks are a problem. They're they're together though. We need to go in with two of us. So Forge was dead. That's huge. Our side now had the player advantage, assuming that Ryan was still operating on his own. The zombies though were the biggest problem. There were more than ever before because it was the first time that we were all together since like day two and the rates had been cranked up to 11. I stayed on Rob's tail though, constantly trying to pearl behind him, but I could never really connect for a volley of subsequent hits before he would immediately pearl away. Where'd he go? You guys know? Right behind you. Oh, oh shoot. shoot. Hey. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Kim. Kim, you don't have to do this, Kim. We can what what were I'm you doing, Kim? You betrayed uh, us. You're with them. No, no. I have not done that. I swear. I heard you. <laughs> what, should, what should I do? I've been playing both sides. Oh my gosh. These husks. Get to oh, 90 God, seconds. 90 seconds. To where? I presume it's the helicopter. No, this is not it. Just as Kim fell into the hole and all of us were standing on top of the helicopter, we had that last minute realization, the front of the base, not on top of where we were standing. And I pearled away at the worst possible time. I'm tempted to go check the front. Oh, you're on the correct helicopter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yes. yes. We got him. Oh, <laughs> uh, guys. What? What? Guys, help! What? Help! Where are you? Where are you? I'm stuck in the hole. There's no hey way there, we folks. can get down there. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. Hey, I'm in. Hey, boys. Hey, you letting him come with us? Yeah. Sure. Uh, 
Hey, I, I have no quarrels with any of you guys. All right, here, boys. I think there's it's no, time to celebrate. There's no bottom. Yes. <laughs> no bottom. Extraction yes. complete. We win. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we made it. Woo! Here, celebrate. Yeah. Here, celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> We win the wannabes! Slowly, madman. Slowly, madman.